we're going to want to do when you guys are looking at this is, again, just create a triangle. triangle. Now, again, we don't know, is it an acute oblique triangle or an obtuse? I wouldn't worry about it at this point in time. I would just draw an acute triangle, and we can adjust from there. So we have A, which is 55 degrees. Um, we don't know A over there. We could say, here's B, which is that's 12. And then we could say big C, and that's 7. So what we notice here is we have a side angle side, right? Now, side angle side is good. That proves congruency. So we don't have to worry about like an ambiguous case, at least in this portion. But we don't have a ratio to use law of sines, do we? Right? We don't, we, to use law of sines, you have to have that ratio. So we don't have that in this case. However, we do have the law of cosines, which is provided to us. And again, we have those two formulas with the check marks. So in this case, since I have the angle of A, that would be the easiest formula to use, right? Because I can't use, I don't have B or C, like large B, large C. So therefore, that's the only formula that I'm going to want to find, because now I can find the value of A, right? And that's helpful. So I'll just go ahead and write that out there. So I have A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of A. That's your formula. Now let's just plug things in. So A squared equals B squared, which is uh, 12 squared plus c squared, which is 7 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 12 times the cosine of 55 degrees. Now, usually, guys, it's not the plugging in the problem, the, the points that's the issue. The hard part comes into typing these into your calculator. This is where students make their mistake or make a lot of their mistakes. OK. So let's go ahead and type in here. Now, what I typically like to do is, you know, your calculator is smart enough to follow the order of operations. Yes? How do you know which, uh, which one to use? Again, the reason why I did this one is I don't have any angle C or B. So I don't want to use cosine of B, cosine of C, because I have nothing to plug in there, right? And I can't solve for cosine of B or cosine of C because I don't know what A is. So the only formula that would work is this one, because I have all the information I need except for A. So this is the only formula where there's only one unknown, right? Okay, And usually, the kind of hint is, whatever your angle is, that's the formula you use. So since I have A, I'm going to use the one with cosine of A. OK. okay. Exactly. Um, so let's go ahead. And so I have A squared equals. Now, <clears throat> when you guys are typing this into your calculator, what I usually like to do is, you know, your calculator is smart enough to know um, to follow the order of operations. But I typically like to just do this one by one or like on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these. So I'm going to do I'm going to do that first. Again, you could type this all at once, but I like to do it step by step. So I'm going to do 2 times 7 times 12 times the cosine of 55 degrees. All right. So now then I'm going to do 12 squared, which is 144, plus 7 squared, which is 49. And then I'm going to subtract. Oh, crap. Oh, why did I do that? Oops. Sorry, I didn't want to do it like that. Like this. Let me enter that. That's my answer. OK, so I'm going to do 12 squared plus 7 squared, and then minus second answer. So what that's doing for your calculator is going to square 12, add it to that, add it to 7 squared, and then sub subtract all of that right there. OK? Now, notice I'm subtracting it because I didn't use the negative 2, right? I made that a positive 2, and then I'm gonna, that's why I'm going to subtract that. Um, so again, if you typed it all at once, that's perfectly fine. That's just the way that I like to do it. Either way, you should get the exact same value of me, which is 96.639. But again, guys, remember, that's what a squared is, right? So therefore, you've got to now take the square root. And remember, when we introduce the square root, we do positive or negative. But again, are we talking about any direction here with these triangles? Do we have like an x, y axis or direction of a word problem? No, right? So therefore, it's just going to be the positive. So now I take the square roots of my answer. Oops. Square roots, second answer. And you should get 9.83. And let's round this to the nearest thousand. Talk about that. So 
Now I'm going to store this because that's 9.831. If I want to be upper class, I can stow it. So we're going to store as alpha A. All right. Now, it would make sense, or this isn't really that bad. We like this, but it is a little bit more work than the law of cosines, right? You guys agree? So wouldn't it be nice to kind of go back to the law of sine? Or sorry, wouldn't you guys be nice to kind of go back to the law of sines? Now, here's the problem with going back to the law of sines. Let's, use the, let's say we want to go back to the law of sines and we want to find angle C. All right? So therefore, B is really kind of irrelevant right now. right? So if we look at this, if we go back to the law of sines, do you guys, do you guys realize when we're doing law of sines, we're now back to angle side side, which is, again, creating that ambiguous case. If we want to find angle B, then the C side is really irrelevant. And again, we're looking at angle side side. And we do not want to go back to using the two case system, right? That is way too much work. Would you guys agree? We don't want to check both solutions. So what we can do is to avoid having to use this, since this angle is still acute, we're going to want, whenever you have this, we're going to want to go back and use the law of cosines again. So if I want to solve for C or B, anybody have an option? Anybody care? C? OK, let's find C. So again, I have a formula for C. I can say cosine of C is B squared plus A squared minus C squared all over 2BC. Well, I already have all this information, right? Yes? Yes, no? Yes. OK, so then for C equals cosine inverse, right? Because you just take the cosine inverse of b squared, let's see, which is 12 squared plus a squared. Now, a is stored, correct? We stored a. We found a and we stored it. And then minus c squared, which is 7 squared. And then all over 2 times b, which is 12, times a again, which is our stored answer. OK, now you can type this onto your calculator, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I'll show you guys in the next example. I'll show you how I, uh, another way, I'll type it all at once. For this example, I'm just going to do it one by one. Now, here's the way that I type it, uh, you know, one by I just like to do it. I'm going to evaluate the numerator, and then I'm going to evaluate the denominator. So to do that, I'm going to do 12 squared. So I'll type in 12 squared, even though I know that's 144, plus alpha a squared minus 7 squared. Now, your calculator, again, is following the rule of order of operations. It is going from left to right, so I will calculate that correctly. Okay, So I get 191. Now, I'm going to want to divide that. Now, here's where it's really important. I'm going to divide that by my denominator. So here's, here's an important thing. What most students will do is they'll do answer divided by 2 times 12, like this, and then you know times a. The problem with this is, guys, your calculator is going to divide by 2 and then multiply by 12. That's not what we want it to do, right? We want it to divide by the whole denominator. So what we need to do is make sure we put parentheses in there. So you're dividing by, you're going to put your denominator in parentheses. So it's to 2 times 12 times alpha a. Close the parentheses. OK, and now we have that value. And we'll just take the cosine inverse of that decimal. So I hit second cosine. Uh-oh. What did I type? Oh, I forgot to hit the second answer. <laughs> There's my answer. Second cosine, second answer. So what that does is take the cosine inverse of your last answer which is 35.68. So C equals 35.682. And let's store that. So again, to do the storing function, you're just going to hit store. And let's store that as alpha C. So now, yes? No. So then why is it I don't know. <laughs> no, because it was just. It, was it should be times 7, right? Yeah, but. It, oh, no, this is supposed to be 2B. Oh, I wrote that wrong, though. 
Why did I write all those wrong? No, those are right. A, B. This should be 2, B, A. That's, I did it correctly. I wrote down the formula wrong, though. Sorry about that. Good catch, though. Yes, Ashton, any other question? OK. You showing that? Oh, OK, cool. That's all I was just making sure. Um, all right, so we have C. We have A. So we have C, we have A. Can we now find B? Yeah. yeah, we can find B kind of easily, right? Just subtract it from 180, subtract C and A from 180. So I'll just do 180 minus, oh, did I store C? Yeah, I did. Alpha C minus my A, which is 55 degrees. And I get 89.31, and let's round that to the 8. So B equals 89. 0.316. Okay? And again, guys, let's kind of look at this. Does our hinge theorem work? Does the largest angle have the largest side? Does the smallest angle have the smallest side? Does it kind of work? Right? And there you go. So um, just make sure, guys, when you're doing your calculations, do not calculate with these rounded answers. Make sure you're using the storing feature or you're writing down every single digit and typing that in. Okay? So don't use your rounded answers in your calculations but you can round them for your final answers. Um, and then also, I'll show you guys in the next example how to do this. But in this example, I just did things step by step. You can also type them all by one, all into your calculator. You just got to be careful with your parentheses, which I'll show you. Yeah, isn't that what I did? Oh, I rounded it like down. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to go to eight. Any questions on the law of sines, law of cosines? Yes, what you looking for? Yeah. 